All right, Tommy. All right. Welcome to Take a Breath with Joe and Tom. Tom and my favorite podcast, B2B podcast, uh, where we talk about how to build a business, a life, and everything in between. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, man. How are you? Doing well. Yeah. Ready awesome. for uh, ready for spring. Yeah. yeah a little Not Easter too much sun here today. Yeah. Yeah. Easter weekend's coming up, yeah. so a little break. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's, let's get let's timestamp this. Today is March twenty sixth, twenty twenty four. It's Tuesday. Uh, Tommy, raising prices. Um, the raising price. What is the true cost when you raise prices? Okay. I mean, we all all you know when you're in business. Most of the time, it's for profit. Um, there are nonprofits, but when you're working for profit, one of the ways that people think about making more money is to raise prices, but that does come uh, with a cost. Sometimes it's a right. good idea. Sometimes it's a bad idea. Um, but this was, this was something that you put on the dock. So what, 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 what did you want to talk about in terms of raising prices? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's where we're at today. Um, I mean, we're, we're all, if we're not, we should be, but everyone's, really hyper focused on you know prices being raised where you're spending money how you save money um and it's it's a good it's a good lesson you know um two weeks ago i think or a week ago when i wrote this on the docket i got two or three emails and notifications in the mail one from Ehrlich's Pest Control one from my storage unit one from Panera Unlimited Sip Club so the three three times in a week, these companies were just raising raising the prices, just raising the prices, not even like describing really what the raise was all about. Mm. Now some now it's warranted in some companies, you know, energy costs and all this. Um, my storage unit, for example, I mean, since I've been with them, they've doubled their price. Mm. Now storage units built, it's not climate controlled. I don't see their costs going up significantly to raise their prices. So. What's happening is it's it's making me, it's making us rethink if we need things, rethink if I can do it. Um, I'm going to get out of my storage unit and I rather than pay for storage unit, I'm going to build one in the back and I can finance a huge storage unit for half the price that I'm paying monthly over the storage unit. So I love my storage unit, but guess what? They've They've raised their price to the point where it doesn't make sense. Now they don't care about me. They don't care, but they're going to lose vacancy for a couple months. They'll lose money. And, but what's happening down the road when you start gouging people, you know, restaurants or poor restaurants, but, but not only, um, or gouging people, they may lose their customers for life. Yeah. Um, you know, like Ehrlich's pest control, it, it's kind of a nice to have service, but I like it. You know, we've had some pest issues here across the year, but They've raised their prices over and over. And I know there's, you know, gas and prices involved and all that, but it's making me rethink, do I need the service? I can do it. Um, so so all, 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 all these price increases, I'm saying companies beware because there will be downstream implications to it, whether or not customers come back. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more important than keeping your customer happy. Yeah and having a lifelong customer rather than losing them. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm at. I'm a do another example. My wife says, you have a padiddle. You're one of your light bulbs. Uh, they're out on your, uh, on my, in my car. Uh, I, I drive a, a Subaru Forester. She's like, should I call the mechanic to, to put the light bulb in? I'm like, no, I'm going to do it myself. I'm not going to pay 90 bucks to put a light bulb in. And some, some are a little bit more difficult than others, but guess what? I'll put a YouTube video on, I'll figure out, I'll do it myself. And I'll save myself a hundred bucks. That's that. This is what's coming out of this inflation. This this these price hikes. These exercises are coming out where we're becoming more self sufficient. We're becoming. I'm showing my kids that we can do it. You can do it yourself. You know. Now sometimes it's worth paying. You know, it's worth paying that three hundred bucks if it's a good price. 
to, to use your time in other areas. So you got what you what I'm saying is you got to kind of figure out the pros and cons and decide are these is this is it, am I getting gouged? It's like a game. It's really a game nowadays. It is, you know, and we're playing it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's an opportunity cost of what does it cost to do it yourself versus pay? Um, I, I wonder I wonder if anyone has um, studied the correlation between um YouTube oh, yeah. is, is is a competitor to people with trades, right? Interesting. Yeah. Like you just said, I went on YouTube and I figured it out. I mean, I, I talked right. to a friend of mine who who needed something done to his roof and he got a quote for like fifty five thousand dollars or something like that. He went on he went <laughs> on YouTube, did the whole thing himself for like four grand. Yeah, you're hearing more of that. You yeah. Know? And I, I love I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and I always wanted to run a business that if i raise the prices you know obviously if you raise your prices too much i don't care what business you're in people are going to be like go f yourself um but right. i always wanted to run a business that where when we raise the price that people will be like you know what i love your product so much still worth it type of thing right, right. um and you know and you and i discuss raising prices because we in merge analytics in our right. uh, the company that tom and i run you know we keep our pricing pretty low and have we've never to, our audience we've never ever 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 raised our prices yeah and so but i'm not saying you know no. you know i don't want somebody to play that clip back when we raise prices there will be a Ho point hopefully we don't prices. maybe maybe we'll uh, never do there yeah. will but what do you give your customers that they don't have today to justify you have to yeah yeah the price you know, rise and like, you know, um, you know, we have a I mean, these are some of these service fees that are just kind of implemented or these, these line items saying convenience fee, like, fucking what's a convenience fee, you know, and I'm seeing it all over now. Now, when you look up the chain and you're seeing these CEOs making a half a million, a million a year, don't you think they could put a little money back into the company to save the cost? Like that's, that's the company I want to do business with. That's the company that I'm going to stay with. Elon and, Musk and, uh, yeah. gets paid something like a dollar a year or something like that. Steve Jobs had the same type yeah. of deal. I mean, you have those guys in there and they get paid stock, you know. Right. And, and, and you know what? Yeah. Those guys deserve to make a lot of money. If they're sure. making money, you yeah. know, if they're making great products and they're making their shareholders rich right. and they're making their customers happy, a good CEO should make a lot of money. But I, I hear what you're saying. Well, no, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, your 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 attendant, your attendants are gonna go up, and your eyes are gonna get bigger when you start seeing customers go away. And then you can easily connect the dots why. And 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 if you're just again gouging for no good reason, back to what you said. You know, like I I get a document in the mail or I get an email saying, okay, your new price is gonna be thirty percent more next month. Okay. What, why? Like what, what value am I getting? Like what's happening? Explain to me that energy costs are raising or, or get or something like justify the, 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 the hike. Don't just, just don't ball it up in inflation. Don't say it's inflation. That, that doesn't mean a whole lot either. So, yeah. Well, I mean, inflation is real. Um, it is real. No, I get it's real. Yeah. You know, we just talked about before where now if you like, you want a nice dinner, you yeah. Know, like let's yeah. say you're having a dinner party for six people, six adults. Right. I, I was making the argument today, if you're gonna make a nice dinner, or whether you whether you cook it yourself, I mean, some people love cooking and love putting in the time, and that's that's there's something to that, and it's healthier and right, less that. salt, yeah, less salt and whatever. But if you're going merely for time and money, right. catering. Is now like I use the the, the uh, example of a big zini and a platter of meatballs. I spent thirty dollars. I got a salad. It came with a salad. Nice. It's a good it, deal. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, thirty dollars. Yeah. And we didn't finish it. We could probably eat it two more. You know, it's for my kids. Probably two more meals. If I would have cooked fed, if that, fed your whole same, family. Well, not my wife, but uh, okay. my two kids and me. Okay. Yeah, it was a right. big so platter. Three, yeah. That's but good. That's a great deal. It yeah. is a great deal. Yeah, yeah. But if I were to go to the store, buy the meat, mm -hmm. buy sauce, I get Rails, which is like thirteen dollars a jar. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I got two jars, get some I got Del some yeah. 
I got some cheese, ricotta cheese, and mozzarella cheese, and the and the the pasta is always inexpensive. Right. I guarantee it's more than thirty dollars. Yeah, uh, yeah, but that's but that's the point. You're 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 sensitive to the situation, so you 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 balance it out, and that's a great deal. I mean, if you can if you can feed your your kids and yourself for for ten or under, that's great nowadays. You know, ten dollars or less, you know, and have food left over. But on the flip side, like, you know, I start, I stopped getting subs out because I'm getting a sub, I'm getting a turkey. My kids eat turkey and cheese, turkey, cheese, and and, and mustard for what, for 12 bucks? No, yeah. I'm going to make it, right. I'm making it at home, guys. That makes sense. But, but, it, but that, that's the point. Like we're hyper sensitive and focused on what makes sense and what doesn't, which is good because we're just not that, we're just not the, we're not a buyer that just goes out and spends because, because when you well, do that, you start getting taken advantage of. Well, we or mentioned you, we mentioned resources like YouTube. I think the consumer today, like we talk about this too, how much money is made in our economy for just people not knowing, not right? Yet. Like, yeah. you know, your car is making a noise, a thousand bucks. Meanwhile, the, you know, they get on the lift and they're like, and it's, and it's fixed, right? right? Software development. I mean, we've been around this our whole lives. One yeah. little change, you'd be like, well, it's important. Uh, a thousand right. bucks. Okay, yeah. sounds like a good deal. Our last guy charged us five thousand. <laughs> yeah, but like so much money is made for people not knowing, and I think right. that's changing because yeah. or has changed because of YouTube, because of Chat GPT, because yeah. of artificial. Like that's what artificial intelligence is. The great, you know, we're like, oh my god, oh my god. But you know what? Artificial intelligence is doing things like that, uh, and and, and we would have had to pay people thousands and thousands and thousands right. of dollars to to do what the, what it does in a few minutes now it is scary and that actually plays in nice right to what we're going to talk about but before we get into artificial well, intelligence so you, what but yeah. you brought up a good point and what's happening with the being hypersensitive and focused on situate buying situations is the due diligence that you put in and the money that you fork over is to people that you trust. So you're starting to really figure out who your who your circle of trust and the people you do business with that you can trust, knowing that if I do throw up a project this way, I'm not gonna have to worry about them, you know, fluffing it up or putting convenience line items in, you know, and that that's a positive thing. Well, too. Yeah. and that also goes back to what we talked about in our last podcast relationship building relationships, relationships yeah. yeah are the most important i don't care if you have the greatest product if if you're not trustworthy no one's gonna or if you you're a price gouger or it's got to be i trust joe and tom yeah you know yeah uh, it only takes one or two times you know like okay okay this guy's not i don't i don't buy him you know i'm leaving you know and i'll, I'll right. go somewhere else yeah right and and and, uh, and, you, and we have definitely i mean our customer base is proof in the pudding yeah I mean, we have customers who we haven't you know have been with us for five years i mean it's they love us yeah. you know we're not we're not apple you know uh, the only yeah. other thing i could think of that <laughs> like that is apple uh, yeah but yeah. i mean that's that's hey uh, a credit to you and me as uh, as another there podcast would, would say. Awesome. Um, artificial intelligence. I love it. <laughs> which we just, <laughs> which we touched on in a second. And rightfully so, people are upset or worried that it's going to disrupt. And some people downplay it. I don't think it should be down. I don't think it's healthy to be downplayed from the things that I've been, you know, people like, ah, it's not going to, it's not going to replace workers. It will. Oh, it's yeah. going to happen in 50 to 100 years. No, more like five years. Right. Uh, Elon Musk says one year <laughs> that it's that a AI, uh, AGI, um, uh, artificial generative intelligence, and the large and the L uh, 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 LMMs, large uh, LLMs, large language models. That's what you're. Anytime you hear okay, LLM, yeah. it's large language yeah. model, and that's basically artificial intelligence teaching itself. But it's cool. going to be yeah. all artificial intelligence is going to be smarter than all human beings combined anywhere from one to five years. Scary. Now, yeah. it is scary, but in the same, so we've talked about this too. Have you ever heard of the Luddites? Yes. Okay. 
So Ludd, some guy named Ludd, uh, back, I think it was the turn of the century, whenever the cotton gin was was invented. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, whenever that was. I think it was around early Wiley. 19th. Maybe, maybe 18th. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever that guy's name is. Yeah. So what happened was the cotton gin and then actually the sewing machine, um, you know, textiles and sewing and and getting the cotton to a place where you could make clothes was a huge industry, huge employer of people, okay? Sewing, whatever, whatever they were doing, <laughs> okay? And then the cotton gin in the sewing machine was invented, were invented. And this guy, and it was a major threat to a huge population of people. And so what these people started to do, led by this guy named Ludd, would go around destroying cotton gins and destroying sewing machines, you know, because he thought, you know what, I, I don't, I, you know, we got to stand up for our rights, you know, we're going to be at it. What are we going to do? Right. What are we going to do? Right. Yeah. I think that's where we are right now. And the good news that I would say is we don't know yet. I mean, it's scary, but those like the LUD, like like back in 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 those days, they, that was before electronics, obviously before the internet, obviously before all of the major uh, revolutionary technology that we developed. But because those people had time to go and focus in other places. We survived and we thrived and we exponentially grew. And I think, I mean, look, bad things can always happen, but I think this is a period where we just don't understand yet. Like in five years, 10 years, and we like, remember when we were talking about, you know, how scary AI is and look at what we're doing now. Like you just don't well, know. There, yeah. That's a, the, that's the fine line. There, there's a level of embracement but you always have to question the consequences. Yeah. With with anything that that is <laughs> yeah, anything that you develop to enhance life or or don't understand the downstream implications, there will be one. For every A, for every action A, there's an action B. So that that's a fact. You know, you're as you're talking, I was I was going back to the Industrial Revolution. Like fantastic the industrial revolution was such a thriving time and there were jobs there was innovation there was mass production but what was the downstream implication the environment it really took a toll on the environment like so the environment uh uh depression well right yeah. it, it, it it bottomed yeah so so no no no, no. i'm saying people you know working at these fuck the, excuse me oh yeah. working at these like assembly it's line right. jobs started right. losing their they were doing the same thing over and oh over. right right yeah yeah um so so yeah so there you you and i'm embrace i'm embracing maybe selfishly the ai piece because it's it's going to tie in magically to our data sets and just really advance what we do but AI to its fullest potential when you're talking about it being more intelligent than humans, almost taking me back to Terminator, you know, oh, then those consequences have to, you have to continue to ask, what are the downstream consequences? Don't just be inside it and be excited about it. Try to figure out what the problems can be in the future to prepare ourselves. And there, there are so many unknowns, but, but that's, that's what's neat about technology you got to embrace it, but you also have to be concerned about it. It's it's exciting, you know? Um, yeah. With everything, there is a good thing and an equally bad thing. You know, right. fire can burn your house down, but it could cook your food and heat your right. house. You know, water is, you know, could grow food uh, and wash you, but you could also drown. Uh, you know, everything has a positive and an equal negative. And artificial intelligence is is no different. I mean, people rightfully so in hollywood should you know that's artificial intelligence i don't feel sorry for hollywood well but but forget about the executives i'm talking about the no, artists the ones who are oh, writing yeah, screenplays yeah, yeah you don't need to do that anymore you know the ones know. who are doing uh uh you know uh graphic design i mean you don't need to do that anymore yeah. so, 
you know, well, you just, you just, you just, I'm sorry, but you just pulled out a consequence. Uh, our creativity, the, the, the process of creating it, it could be stifled as you know? it is now. Maybe yeah, there's yeah. A, 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 and that's form sad. Of, yeah, but, that's sad, but it is. But maybe there's a form of creativity that we can't even imagine. Well, yeah, well no, you, yeah, then you're right. That my mind went there. Like you started here, and then what can you? How can you take this creative outlet from AI and bring it to another level? Like you know, there was yeah, a no, futurist yeah. who was on a podcast I was listening to, and he was like, "Look, he's like, yeah, it's scary, but we're about think of us as mice becoming human, right? Yeah. Like human intelligence." Yeah. If a mouse all of a sudden had human intelligence and then we said, you know, this is dangerous. Do you mind if we take this away from you? What do you think the, ma the mouse is not going to want to go backwards, right. right? Humans are not going to want to go backwards from where we are going with artificial intelligence. As much as we say, oh, my God, we're going to be out of work or this is going to be terrible. It once once you're enlightened in a certain way, you can't right. go backwards. It just yeah. doesn't work that way. And if we do, that's probably in a world we don't want to live in. Well, but, there's a the re, re, uh, forced regression. I mean, that's a theory too that could happen. You know, over time, you know, we 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 burn up all resources, then we have to go back to the land. You know, but that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic. You know, well, but it, that yeah. that re, forced regression wouldn't have anything to do with enlightenment they're two very different things you know uh thought and spirituality are different than like re like, like physical resources but anyway well what you're saying is why and you could say what you want about elon musk but he is unbelievable he's never done this for the money he wants to have sustainable renewable energy in in solar and wind yeah all, all of tesla's patents are open to who, open source whoever wants to take it he even says that if somebody takes our patents and builds a better electrical car great he's like i want to save the planet's resources he's like and with our rockets i want to get people uh give people the ability to escape <laughs> you know yeah. um and with start, so, let's start yeah. another sustainable planet i mean eventually yeah you know starlink although i just read an article that yeah. starlink is being uh abused by the wrong people but starlink is you know uh, less expensive sometimes free internet Neuralink. you know all these things that he's working on it's he's amazing and yeah. and and you know you talked about you know when we're out of resources that's the other ai could be like hey have you thought about using this? Re have you thought about using sand and right. this, you know, yeah. picked up, I picked something. I mean, we have the Sahara Desert, you know, imagine sand became yeah. an energy source, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, yeah. well, there is the Canadian sand. That's because they have uh, oil in them. But, yeah. um, but we just don't know what we don't know. And, and, you know, like I said, with the mouse and the human or being in a dark, room with absolutely no light somebody flashes the light on would you want to go backwards even if it means like your life is going to change like you wouldn't right we wouldn't like uh anyway well and it, then so let's make sure we're pushing forward to the the, the proper light you know and and we are you know i'm saying you I know hope, like well, you know like yeah it'd be scary if if you can't go back you know but because you, you can't you can't you know well it's dangerous because that's what we're getting into now um it, it is like, you know, getting a real answer rather than a politically right. correct answer is yeah. where, because, you know, artificial intelligence learns and is trained on data and on parameters that, you know, at this point we're like gods, but soon the AI will be gods. But, you know, they're, they're giving out information based on the people who are telling, you know, uh, you know, like, like, is it going to, like, it won't be racist, you know, it won't, but, but by, by making sure it's politically correct, you're, you're running the risk of providing wrong information. Like it, it just becomes impossible policing. Right. Like you could say this, but not that, and listen to that, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's the, that's the challenge, a, a major right. challenge. Or like, can I go on chat GPT and say, uh, uh, give me the, uh, tell me how to make a bomb. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and there are go backdoor ways. 3D, go get your 3D printer, you know, like. Yeah, right. Well, there are <laughs> backdoor ways, like you can trick AI. Yeah. 
Um, and then when does AI become smart enough to be like, you know, I don't want to give you that information. You know, you could use that. Thing. I don't know. And, and maybe yeah. it's benign information that a- AI is saying is difficult. Uh, is is it, it, that that it shouldn't get? There's so many. That's why we need just like we have Food and Drug Commission, you know, Communication Commission. You know, we need an agency, an artificial intelligence agency. Yeah, I'm sure they're. Yeah, I'm sure that's. Not, you're yet. not dealing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna have one. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, that's it. That was the Luddites. So when you hear the term Luddite. That means you're someone who resists technology. So um, yeah. anyway, Tommy, what is it about the red car theory? I have that <laughs> written down. Yeah, I just, I threw that up there. I uh, I saw a, um, I don't know, I watched a quick clip from LinkedIn or something. And there's this young girl talking to this this guy and, and she goes, you know, do you know what the red car theory is? And he goes, he goes, no. And she started explaining. She goes, well, she goes, how many, he goes, how, how long was your commute today? And he goes, it was like 30 or 40 minutes. And she said, uh, well, how many red cars did you pass? And he goes, I, I don't know, none. I, I don't know. I don't know. She goes, if I told you, you know, tomorrow on your way to work, I'll give you 10 bucks for every red car you, you spot. You're, 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 you're going to, you're going to see every red car on, on the road from, from, from home to your commute. And I just I equate I equated that that theory with engagement intelligence. And here's why, because you know, a lot of people kind of think engagement intelligence is kind of a transactional thing. It's this this company is is engaging with your brand. Okay, they're interested. Let's do something, let's act on it, let's close a deal, this and that. But that's not the real power of engagement intelligence. It's it's really surfacing trends and patterns and information throughout the day or the week that is actually stored in in your in your mind, so that when opportunity presents itself, you're more prepared than you think. And that's the same thing. Like so, so when she said when she said you're you know on your way to work tomorrow, she probably didn't say like look for red car. She goes on your way to work tomorrow. You know, just let's talk after. And just because she said red car, he's probably spotted all these cars and be like yeah. I, and now I'm seeing red cars everywhere. Right. But that's because he was he was intelligent was br- intelligence was brought to his attention. So he's reacting and he's. He's grabbing the opportunities where they are. And that's that's why I was I thought it was cool because I'm like, you know what? That's not unlike engagement intelligence. So many people don't quite understand what engagement intelligence is and the real power deep down. You know, it's not just like a transactional thing, like a, a click here, click there, somebody like needs something, let me, let me, let me call them. That that's not engagement intelligence. Um, and so that's why I wrote it down. I thought it was cool. And I'm, I'm always looking for ways to incorporate theories and philosophies into the power of, of predictable outcomes. Yeah. That's my, that's my jam. I love predictable outcomes yeah. and to have like a po- positive ex- expectancy, you need certain tools in place to predict an outcome. And engagement intelligence is absolutely one of them. And I'll, I'll fight for that. And, and there's just a lot of companies that don't, don't, don't have it, believe it in, or, or just behind. You well, know? and this kind of plays into what I'm going to talk about next and we're coming to the end, but um, it's very difficult being in our position. We talk to a lot of customers and sometimes even if the customer gets it, they're like, eh, you know, I don't think I need it right now. And we know from our experience, uh, and sometimes the customer can respond not nice, like, no, don't want, like, nothing, like, you know, not appreciate your time to walk me through. It's just like, no. Right. But we know that <laughs> our tool yeah. would add value to your business. We know it. And the only reason why we know it is because we have proof with our other customers. And it just, especially when people don't know you that well, you don't have the relationship with them. 
Um, even if it's a cold email, you're like, I'm telling, do you have anything? No, I'm telling you what I have for you at a very inexpensive, uh, for a very inexpensive fee will add value to your business and how you, um, you know, understand who's engaging with your digital brand and how you can reach out to those people, knowing what their interests are. Right. And, and just, you know, is, is, you know, and we know the types of businesses that have historically been very successful with our, with merge analytics. It's very difficult, sometimes very discouraging because I'm, I, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to rub people the wrong way. And somebody says they're not interested, you know, okay. Right. But we like, you know, because you have a reputation of being a sales guy. All we want to do is close right. business. That's not how we approach it. What I said earlier in the podcast, we want to add value. We don't just want to close a deal. We want you to be like, you know what? This is awesome. Thank you. Is well, it and it's only also about nine dollars a month. I don't get it. That's well, it's, it's, that's the right. But when you have someone says no, go pound salt, and you're like, wow, okay. But I'm telling you, for a very low cost, this is going to be a good thing for you. It's 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 tough to stomach sometimes. Well, yeah, it's it's because um, not everybody is willing to um, be educated at that moment. And that, that's really what it is. And I'm starting to learn, like, you know, we do, have, you know, believe it or not, we have to educate people on companies, you know, and, and, and business develop execs and VPs of sales and all the what engagement tell real engagement intelligence is and what what you can what the real benefit is. And you can't just do that in two seconds. I mean, you, you can do an elevator pitch, but but it takes time to educate and the awesome thing is, is organically that message is growing and more and more, especially now, like third party cookies are, are completely squashed and all that crap is out of there. Um, sorry, with third party, this guy who said, Hey, not, you know, I, I find merge analytics creepy. Yeah. I told you the story. So yeah, I walked yeah. him through it. He loved merge analytics, sends me an email. You know what? I think we're talking back here in the office and, some people thought it was creepy. And I was like, well, do you think caller ID is creepy? Yeah. And I'm like, but that same guy who said that merge analytics is creepy and we don't use third party cookies, by the way. And it's public information and it's your data and you don't even need merge analytics to do it. You could do it yourself. But again, we save you time and money. But that same guy had cookies on his yeah. website. <laughs> He's saying, <laughs> I, he was saying that what he felt we were a little creepy, and then I all of a sudden all I would see was ads for his business. But for, forget about that. Go to. But let's start with with let's start with the if somebody tells me that engagement intelligence is creepy, they have no clue what engagement intelligence is it's because awesome. it's it's informa it's information that your customer or prospect wants you to have to help guide them through a pr proper journey. Absolutely. Like, so, so to me, I'd be like, all right, we got to start from the beginning. Let me explain and educate you. And then you, you can educate somebody so many times. And if they don't, if they don't, if they don't wrap their head around it, it's it's time to it's There's time a to go. saying that you, can't, you yeah. can't teach someone something that they think they already know. Yeah, that's true. And so anyway, okay. do you have any recommendations? I do. This is an interesting one. Um, I recommend that anybody listening to this. Um, get, get outside your comfort zone, but do, do it this way. Like if you're, if you're, if you're, um, uh, if you run or if you hike, wh whatever, if you run three miles a day, run two more miles, push yourself to limits that you didn't think you could actually make it to. And here's why I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to roll that into my, you know, my, you know, exercises maybe once a month or whatever, because if you push yourself beyond what you think you can do, what kicks in is one, you can do it. Two, you, you're never more present than when you're physically feeling 
just drained. You, you, no, nothing matters more to you than actually finishing that objective. And, and lastly, if you can't finish it and need help, you'll find the help. And it's just the, the, you know, like, it's just a, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing more satisfying than finishing something that you don't think you could do. And I, I've been doing that. I'm feeling more present. And uh, I just challenge you, maybe you don't, you now be careful, like don't overdo it. You know, if you hike, maybe you do a flat hike, find something steep and just push yourself, push so yourself. I'm going to skip yeah. recommendations for myself only because of time constraints. Okay. But yeah, I yeah. happen to have taken this screenshot and it plays into exactly what you're saying. So I listened to Tim okay. Ferriss. Uh, he wrote the four hour work week and he's just like a, he's basically a human science project. Like he doesn't like to give uh, advice unless he first does it himself. Like that's right. his thing. like everything. Yeah, yeah. Like he, it, he's really he's built quite a, quite a uh, career. But anyway, uh, Sunday morning, uh, before my my hike, I was I was scrolling and I saw something that he posted and he said he 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 posted this: life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. It's a short reminder that success can usually be measured by the number of uncomfortable conversations we're willing to have and by the number of uncomfortable actions we are willing to take. I love it. Yeah. So uh, you know. Get uncomfortable. I think that's what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I'm really trying to get that through to Hattie. Um, but yeah. Life awesome. shrinks yeah. or expands yeah. in proportion to one's courage. Yeah. That's a heavy yeah. statement. Anyway. Rich. All right. I'll leave, you, um, I'll leave you with that. Awesome, Joey. Good stuff. I'll, uh, right, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Take care. Awesome. Take care.